News and arrest. Sheriff deputies say this man, 19 year old Christopher Jeremy Salazar, being charged with the sexual assault of a 15 year old female. Investigators say the incident allegedly took place back in mid January. The victim told deputies she met the suspect through Instagram and was under the impression he was only 17. The conversations moved to Snapchat, where the victim says they became sexual in nature. Investigators say the suspect picked the girl from picked the girl up from school, and it was that day she said a sex act happened. The suspect also facing gun and drug charges was already on probation on a felony robbery charge. You can find more information on this case at ksat.com. One year later, her family says it is still surreal. Sarah Aguilar was just 17 at the time she was shot and killed while sitting in a parked car. The teen accused of pulling the trigger was just indicted for manslaughter. Courtney Friedman was invited to a memorial today at the cemetery where Aguilar is buried. Three, one, two, three, we miss you. We miss you. A family letting some of their pain float away, balloons against a gray sky, fitting for the occasion. Show us something else. Gabriel Munoz can't believe it's been exactly one year since his little sister, Sarah Aguilar, was shot and killed. It hurts. It really does hurt. Just two weeks ago, Manuel Gonzalez, now 19, was indicted on a manslaughter charge. Aguilar was 17 when police say she was sitting in the front seat of a car parked outside her mother's home. They say Gonzalez was in the back seat when he allegedly reached for a gun in his pocket and pulled the trigger, hitting Aguilar in the back. Munoz says the two did know each other. She never brought him up to me, so, or my, or our family. I mean, at the time, we did hear that they had dated, and that was news to us. Gonzalez and his friend ran from the scene after the shooting and were later arrested. Adding to the family's confusion, was the shooting intentional? It seemed like at that time, everybody's story was the same on that incident, like that it was an accident, but, um, I mean, like I say, you always wonder what if it's more. Either way, Munoz is choosing forgiveness. And I'm not going to carry any hate. Uh, we all know what that does to people holding on to grudges like that. But I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I still want him to be held accountable for what he did. But those thoughts for another day. Today was about Aguilar and the family that loves and misses her. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. New information just into our newsroom. Texas state health officials say the Texas Center for Infectious Disease is being used right now for certain coronavirus patients. They are not providing an exact number of patients they are treating. These patients came from Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. TCID is located on the city's south side on Southeast Military. This comes at the same time County Judge Nelson Wolf said he doesn't want patients under quarantine at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland to be transferred off the base. He said so in a letter to Congressman Chip Roy this afternoon. Wolf's letter requests the Department of Defense keep all evacuees who arrived at JBSA Lackland from a quarantine cruise ship in Japan just where they are, even when they show minor symptoms of the virus. Wolf says the plan to move patients to local hospitals results in the unnecessary transport of evacuees, placing health care staff and potentially other residents at an increased risk of exposure. Roy, the con Congressman Chip Roy, has requested more information from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Defense about how certain cases and evacuees are being handled. We'll have an update coming up tonight on the Night Beat at 10. No food, no water or electricity. These are just some of the conditions that a newly homeless man in New Braunfels has been forced into. It came after a fire destroyed his mother's house on Loma Vista Street. It also caused the garage that he lived in a few feet away to be unlivable. The fire happened back on February 7th and to this day, Jesus Sainz Jr. still has not been able to bounce back from the loss. Signs, who says he can't work due to disability, tells us he's only had one shower in days, and when he does get food donations, he's forced to barbecue it in his backyard and eat it before it spoils. I do go to food banks, and I've been getting help from people to drop off food and stuff. That house set to be demolished after the incident report is complete, which Signs says could take a few weeks. The police say a man recovering this evening following a crash on the southwest side. That crash happening just before 3 a.m. Police tell us a man in his 60s heading south on I-35 near Somerset when he apparently had a medical episode. It caused him to drive between lanes before crashing under a bridge. He was later taken to the hospital. 
No other vehicles were involved. Jail was the final destination for three men who led sheriff's deputies on a chase across South Bear County this morning. But one man is still on the run. Katrina Weber has the story from where it started. Highway 281 South near Loop 1604. According to the sheriff's office, this started with a couple of looks. A deputy looking and seeing what appeared to be a suspicious car in this parking lot. Then the driver of that car looking at the deputy and taking off. They finally caught up with that car after it crashed in a field on private property along Big Oak Drive, just west of Highway 281 South. Although they had spent a lot of time running and covered a lot of miles, the people in that car ended up practically back where they started just after four this morning. The chase lasted at least 20 minutes, going all the way into Atascosa County and back. At one point, they reached speeds of more than 100 miles per hour, and at times, the suspects headed the wrong way on the highway. After the car crashed, deputies caught three of the people right away, but a fourth one ran away. They blocked off the neighborhood and searched for him. Deputies had to wait until almost daylight to recover the car, which they say was stolen. Investigators believe at least some of that may have been caught on the surveillance cameras here, and they plan to review the video for clues. Reporting from South Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Time saver traffic right now. Let's go to I-35 at Loop 410, and you can see things are very slow going, especially on 35 itself, but things are moving. That's good news. No major traffic accidents to tell you about at this time. Can't really see any water on the road there, but we know a shower did pass through and the temperature is taking a dive. Yeah, and that's the main headline here is the big drop in temperatures. The winds are picking up outside the cold front. Oh, it's arrived and it's causing some pretty big changes. Right now we're 55 degrees here in San Antonio. That's a good 20 degrees cooler than our high temperature earlier this afternoon. Dew point of 48, north wind at 20. Feeling that gusty north breeze and that cold north wind. Already some upper 40s in the hill country, Kerrville 49, even 50 in Bandera. A little bit warmer south of town where the cold front's still pushing through. So temperatures dropping, we'll be down near 50 at 10 p.m. Some intermittent light rain, even some drizzle developing. I'll help you prepare for this colder air coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Former New York Mayor Mike Bloomberg is qualified for the next Democratic presidential debate. It marks the first time the billionaire will stand alongside the rivals he has so far avoided by bypassing early voting states. Instead, he has used his personal fortune to lift his profile and campaign through ads. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi with the latest. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg will take the debate stage for the first time tomorrow. The billionaire businessman qualifying for the Las Vegas event after a new NPR PBS poll released this morning showed him polling well above the 10 percent threshold needed and surpassing Joe Biden among Democrat and Democratic leaning independent voters. Michael Bloomberg with 62 billion dollars can buy every ad he wants, but he can't, in fact, wipe away his record on everything from dealing with stop and frisk to his foreign policy. It's a moment his 2020 rivals have been waiting for, many of whom have already criticized Bloomberg for spending $381 million plus dollars of his own money blanketing the airwaves with ads. I can't beat him on the airwaves, but I can beat him on the debate stage. Bloomberg releasing a new online ad just yesterday, taking aim at frontrunner Bernie Sanders, accusing his campaign of fostering negative energy. Sanders firing back, bringing up Bloomberg's support for New York's controversial stop and frisk policy. A policy Bloomberg said in a recently released 2015 audio was aimed at putting, quote, a lot of cops where the crime is, which means in minority neighborhoods. Bloomberg has since apologized for the policy's impact. You are certainly not going to win when you have a record in New York City that included racist policies like stop and frisk. Nevada's diverse population is also a big factor in this upcoming contest, with now a major grassroots Latino group backing Sanders with their first ever presidential endorsement. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington. Voters here in Bear County began casting their ballots today as early voting kicks off across Texas. There are more than 30 locations around Bear County where you can compete, complete rather, your civic duty this year. More than 1.1 million people are registered to vote in the Texas March primaries, which sets a new record. Democrats and Republicans will each have their own ballot, 
If you're hoping to check your boxes, but you want to beat some of those longer lines, our Bear County Elections Administrator has some advice. Is if you're thinking of early voting, please go Thursday and Friday of this week and Monday and Tuesday of next week, because historically those are our slowest days. We always have the people who want to vote first, the first day and get it out of the way, and that's what we're seeing today. Races include candidates running for president, sheriff, and several propositions. We have a sample ballot on our on online right now at ksat.com. And while you're there, you can still sign up for our election 2020 elections newsletter. Every Tuesday, we mail out hand-picked coverage aimed at helping you, the voter, better understand the races, the candidates, and the issues. Well, it's almost time to be counted as part of the 2020 census, which will dictate federal funding for the next 10 years. It's a big deal. That funding largely benefiting several nonprofit and charitable organizations serving some of San Antonio's most vulnerable populations. It also shapes the budgets for local schools, hospitals, public transit, Medicare, financial aid, just to name a few. That's why the John L. Santicos Charitable Foundation, a branch of the San Antonio Area Foundation, is investing $200,000 in the Complete Count Committee to make federal funding, make sure federal funding is secured and protected for our area. We're interested in investing in an accurate census to not only protect the dollars that are deserved for our community, but also to potentially grow those dollars so that we can address some of the uh, equity issues in our community. The Complete Count Committee engages with local nonprofit partners who often play a crucial role in identifying those who are at most risk of not completing a census form. Even a 1% undercount for Texas could mean a potential loss of about $300 million every year until the next census. Coming up at six, a woman posing as a photographer in order to steal another woman's baby. That's what police say happened in Washington state. We have details ahead. But first, a new drug trial, which could possibly slow or even stop the progression of Alzheimer's. The medical breakthrough up next. Five and a half million Americans have Alzheimer's disease. It's a condition that has no cure right now and very few treatments. But now there's a first of its kind drug trial that researchers hope will stop this disease in its tracks before the damage begins. Neurologist Risa Sperling is one of the country's top medical minds. For her, Alzheimer's though is personal. So um, my grandfather developed symptoms when I was applying to medical school, actually, and definitely influenced my decision. And then my dad, unfortunately, died almost three years ago now, also of Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Sperling is the lead researcher in the A4 trial. So the A4 study aims to um, use an antibody that helps to clear the amyloid out of the brain and hopefully will prevent the memory loss altogether one day in um, Alzheimer's disease. The researchers screened 15,000 people online and brought 4,000 people in for PET scans, looking for a buildup of the amyloid protein in the brain before people had symptoms. Participants come into the lab every month for an infusion. Half receive the antibody solanozumab. The other half get a placebo. 67-year-old Dennis Chan is a Boston computer scientist with a family history of dementia. Losing what has been kind of yourself is a, is a pretty scary thing. Dr. Sperling says the last two years have brought disappointing results for clinical trials targeting later stages of Alzheimer's, outcomes that have fueled her fire. I think the research really suggests that we need to go earlier and we need to not give up hope, not um, to back down, but in fact to double down and to work harder um, on this disease so that it doesn't defeat us. Researchers are now enrolling patients for future trials. They're looking to test antibodies in even younger participants starting at age 50. They are also hoping to screen more participants through an Alzheimer's prevention study as well. All right, it has dropped five degrees in 30 minutes. 
Just <laughs> just on the gauge that we're seeing there in the in the corner. And that temperature is going to continue to tumble. Ooh, we're not done yet. Well, we're not done yet, Ooh. but it is going to level off in the 40s. That's the nice okay. thing. So we're not talking any sub freezing temperatures or wintry precipitation, you know, with the the moisture that we're going to have working its way through, but a noticeable change. That's for sure. We're, we're already noticing the change outside considering yesterday we made it to 80 degrees. Today was in the mid 70s until the cold front hit and then everything came crashing down temperature wise and the gusty wind is what you're really noticing as well. And I want to show you the latest wind gusts that have been recorded. Hondo 32 miles per hour, New Braunfels 30 miles per hour in San Antonio or clocking gusts up to 28. So yeah, we're feeling that cold wind out of the north and we actually made it to 80 today in Pleasanton, 81 in Catula, 78 in Gonzales and New Braunfels just about 80 degrees. That was earlier today. Look at the difference now. New Braunfels is at 54, Pleasanton down to 63. There's the cold front just hitting Laredo, but still not quite through Victoria, Corpus Christi, or Houston. Behind the front, 50s and now 40s in the hill country. Junctions at 46 and Fredericksburg at 47. So you see the colder temperatures, but you look farther north behind the front and even afternoon readings. We're in the 50s throughout North Texas. We're not looking at 30s or any of that really bitterly cold air working its way southward. Nonetheless, this is a huge change compared to what we've been experiencing over the past couple of days. And look what happens here as the cold air settles in. Tomorrow we may briefly hit 50 degrees. Most of the day will be in the 40s. Thursday, I think we'll be in the 40s all day long. Friday, very briefly in the lower 50s. So for the most part, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just expect temperatures in the 40s most of the time throughout those days. Then we rebound into the weekend and into the early part of next week as we get near 70. All right, so here's the activity on the satellite and radar. You see the thick plume of clouds coming from the Pacific, overspreading Texas, and even some areas of good rain and moisture associated with this pattern, but not a whole lot necessarily in San Antonio. We have some pockets of nice rain in a little bit in parts of the hill country, Rock Springs, northeastward through Gillespie County, yeah, even the junction area, some good rainfall. But locally, we had some showers earlier, even some moderate rain, but overall, not that much rain to speak of right now in and around San Antonio. You get southeast of town and yes, we do have some showers out there, but it's a not it's really not a whole lot of activity. However, I do anticipate this basically radar screen to start filling in as we go through the night and even throughout the day tomorrow. So let's take a look at our future cast and I think it handles it pretty well here starting at seven o'clock. Just some areas of light rain as we get into the nighttime hours while we're sleeping. A few spotty light showers. Same thing tomorrow morning. Spotty light rain. Then we get into the afternoon and you just see these little areas of light rain coming and going. But the heaviest of the rain far north of San Antonio, closer to Waco and even into East Texas. So we'll have a couple of really damp days that just the cloudy, dreary, cold days with overall dampness, but not a whole lot of real rain to show for it accumulation wise. Along and south of Highway 90, maybe a quarter of an inch through Thursday. Northern Bear County, maybe a half an inch and then higher amounts as you head into Gillespie, Blanco, Travis counties, and then especially into East Texas. That's where the core of the moisture is going to be. So we're just on the outskirts of the actual rainfall but still we'll have some damp commutes in the days ahead just because the overall drizzle and sprinkle action. So in the 40s most of the day tomorrow, then we remain cold and damp as we get into Thursday and even windier on Thursday. That's another key there. That's going to be a blustery day. And I think we could have a sunny day by Monday. Wow, we yeah, don't need it. <laughs> we need some patience. Could have a sunny day then. Wow. All mm. right. Thank you. All right. Kind of doom and gloom over the racetrack, but not necessarily in victory lane kind of weird well in their two sides of the story because while they were working to try and get ryan newman out of yeah. his wrecked car the celebration was going on for who actually won the daytona 500 and not just one celebration two that has been called into question you'll hear from them about that and the, the commissioner of major league baseball warning other teams not to retaliate against the houston astros because of the sign stealing scandal what the astros had to say about that coming up Coaches and
Pelicans staff are working their way back to San Antonio to pick up what they so-called second half of the NBA season, some from halfway around the world. This after Patty Mills returned to his home and to aid his fellow countrymen in their recovery from the devastating wildfires that have claimed lives, property, and wildlife in Australia. As they head back to the Alamo City for tomorrow's practice, surely news of Damari Carroll's departure has reached them by now after the Spurs officially announced today that the veteran forward has been waived. After he only saw action in 15 games out of 54 games played this season, after signing a three-year $21 million deal last summer, his contract buyout makes him a free agent automatically. He will sign with the Rockets. That said, if the Spurs are going to at least reach 500 to have a shot at the playoffs, they must go 18-10 and 10 in their final 28 games, starting with the resumption of the rodeo road trip this Friday in Salt Lake City is the latest look at the Western Conference standings, and the top few have not changed hardly at all. Lakers, Denver, Clippers, Utah, and Houston, the bottom half of the top ten. And remember, only the first eight get to go to the playoffs. Dallas, Oklahoma City, Memphis, right now Portland and San Antonio on the outside looking in. Members of the Joe Gibbs Racing team, including Denny Hamlin, have come under fire for two celebrations following Daytona 500, and where the question was whether or not fellow driver Ryan Newman has survived a horrific crash, the dash to the finish line. It was so horrible that NASCAR officials erected large black panels to block the view of fans, thinking the worst, as rescue workers were trying to get Newman out of that mangled mess while that was happening. Hamlin was doing donuts in the infield in front of a hushed crowd, and then again in victory lane, firing off confetti. Joe Gibbs apologizing, saying they just didn't know at the time how serious it was. That's kind of the worst case scenario you can you can possibly have anytime you have a wreck is to have uh, somebody kind of nose nose in right there where your head's at. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, we're, we're, we're praying for the best and uh, we know Ryan's a heck of a tough guy. And uh, so we're, we're going to hope uh, hope he uh, comes out of this good. All right, Newman is in serious condition at Halifax Medical Center, but we are told by his racing team today he's awake and speaking with his family as he begins his road to recovery. Battle Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred has issued a stern warning to all of Major League Baseball that any pitcher caught throwing at members of the Houston Astros this season will be dealt with with stiff penalties, including suspension. How ironic that not a single player on the Astros is suspended after admitting to stealing signs during the entire 2017 season and postseason that included the World Series win. That's what has opposing teams so angry with also what the Astros stripped. They also want the Astros stripped of their title. Instead, the players were given immunity in a negotiated deal with Major League Baseball Players Association. At spring training, the Astros re reacted to the possible retaliation. They can say whatever they want, man. Um, at the end of the day, we got to go out there and win ball games. I think the commissioner is going to do what, what he thinks is right. And, uh, you know, um, we, we're just focusing on playing baseball. I think that's been a, like, a part of the game for a long time. Um, and... Uh, I don't know. I don't. I really don't. I don't really don't have an answer for that. I really uh, haven't really thought about that. All right, well, that was going on at the Astro Spring Training Facilities in Florida. Here at home, our San Antonio Mission held a press conference today and announced a new partnership with Bill Miller Barbecue, now available at the park. When we looked at all the opportunities we had, we had to rank and prioritize what we thought fits best. A, our customer and, and our employees who enjoy coming to baseball games and that just was a natural partnership for us and so it made logical sense when we stepped back and said okay San Antonio is a market we've done well in what do they enjoy what do they love obviously we all love the Spurs baseball is right there with it and me personally I love baseball grew up dreaming of playing in the big so it was a natural marriage for us all right so now you got hot dogs you got puffy tacos and now you have Bill Miller's yeah well they, well they have a giant sweet tea of course mascot, maybe. that's <laughs> of course. what they need of course yeah all right sure I like that I'm suggesting it's a suggestion yeah. Sweet yeah. tea. Yeah. Coming up, a shocking case out of Washington State involving a woman and her daughter posing as photographers. It was actually a plot to kidnap another woman's baby. And the Boy Scouts of America filing bankruptcy. The reason why and how it affects current sexual abuse lawsuits against the organization. Coming up. Now to a case out of Washington state involving a woman and her teenage daughter accused of pretending to be photographers. Why would they do that? Police say it was to kidnap an infant. That woman appearing in court today. ABC's Romina Puga has the story. Over the weekend, police arresting Juliet Parker for allegedly posing as a baby photographer in a plot to kidnap an infant by posting a Facebook ad for free newborn photo sessions. Today, the 38-year-old made her first court appearance. Parker is charged with assault and attempted kidnapping. 
One woman claims Parker came to her home on three different occasions for free photo shoots. On the third, the woman says Parker brought her own teenage daughter, who allegedly gave her a cupcake that made her feel ill and disoriented. The young mother told authorities she called 911 and kicked them out of her home, but not before Parker allegedly took selfies with her baby, wiped her fingerprints, and stole her house keys. We believe she was attempting to find a small female infant and was going to kidnap the baby and take the baby out of state and raise it as her own. Victoria Morris, who had these maternity photos taken by Parker, says after her daughter was born, she couldn't wait to hire her again. So I sent her a message and I was like, I had the baby. Um, when did you want to come out? And I woke up. Again, around like 6 o'clock in the morning, I was scrolling through Facebook, and that's when I saw she had been arrested. Lucky for Morris, nothing ever came of the incident. I broke down. I just started crying and panicking. Authorities are asking if anyone has been contacted by a woman posing as a photographer with the name Juliet Parker, Juliet Knoll, or Juliet Gaines to call detectives as soon as possible. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. On the latest now, the rape trial of Harvey Weinstein, where deliberations are now underway. Deliberations began today regarding the five sex crimes Weinstein is facing. Within an hour, the jurors asking for clarity on the charges before continuing their discussion. Before the deliberations began, an order coming from the judge telling Weinstein's defense team to stop talking to the press. This coming after defense attorney Donna Rotuno wrote an op-ed piece in Newsweek, which directly addressed the jurors. I see it as an act of desperation to try to appeal to the jury that it was not appropriate. And I'm glad that the prosecution brought it to the court's attention. Weinstein accused of raping an actress in a New York City hotel room in 2013 and forcing a sex act on, production, on a production assistant in 2006. Weinstein says any sexual activities with the women were consensual. He denies all claims. A federal judge is refusing to delay Roger Stone's sentencing this week, despite criticism from President Trump on the way the juror, the judge and prosecutors handled the case. Stone was convicted on charges of lying to Congress and witness tampering, which stemmed from the Mueller probe into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. On his way out of Washington today, the president weighed in on the case, saying, quote, I think it was a very rough thing that happened to Roger Stone, unquote. The president also adding that Stone, as well as his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, were both treated unfairly. Do you take a look at what's happening to these people? Somebody has to stick up for the people. That's exactly what the president says he's been doing through his social media posts. The president tweeting just this morning the Mueller investigation was a sham. And if I was not your president, I'd be suing everyone all over the place. But maybe I still will. The Boy Scouts of America now in limbo after filing for bankruptcy. The organization filed for bankruptcy today in the state of Delaware. In the filing, Boy Scouts of America reported between one to $10 billion in assets and estimated 500 million to $1 billion in liabilities. This is BSA faces hundreds of sexual abuse lawsuits involving thousands of alleged abuse victims. Those lawsuits now on hold. In an open letter to victims, the Boy Scouts of America says it entered bankruptcy in order to compensate victims. We will have to uh, establish uh, some sort of compensation structure that, that allows for these victims mm. to, be, uh, to receive some sort of justice. As for those victims that have not come forward yet against the Boy Scouts of America, time is now limited. The organizations say victims must come forward and file claims so they may receive that compensation. Turning to the coronavirus, dozens more passengers aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan have now been confirmed with the virus. 14 infected patients evacuated to the United States are now being kept in isolation. Those patients who tested positive are being kept under watchful eye some are near an Air Force base in Northern California, others at a national quarantine unit in Omaha, Nebraska. One patient was transported to the hospital, to the biocontainment unit, because of a chronic condition. There are, of course, 14 or 11, rather, here in San Antonio at Joint Base Lackland. Health officials around the world have been trying to keep the virus contained, but the number of confirmed cases continues to grow 
and now more than 1,800 people have died. You're coming up in the buzz. Rumor had it Adele had been working on a new album. Now it seems like the songstress is confirming it herself. Plus, an SNL favorite is tapped to host this year's White House Correspondents' Dinner. All right, it's a part of the show where we look forward to the KSAT News at 9. I am anchoring tonight. Myra has the night off, and we're going to start with a story out of Harlandale. A lot of people waiting for the school board meeting tonight to maybe get some clarity on exactly what's going on there. There's been a lot of controversy there for several years now. There's uh, an appointed conservator that is expected to be introduced tonight. A uh, lot going on with the TEA regarding all of that in Harlandale. Yeah, and every week there are certain things we do. Last night I think it was adulting hacks. Tonight it's money, it's personal. And it certainly is, especially when it comes to buying a new house. If you haven't bought a house before, you really need to watch this. If you have bought a house before, you may want to watch it again and just see what <laughs> and everything. And see what mistakes you made. Yeah, all the mistakes because this is full of pitfalls if you don't do it right. Yeah, the closing process. I think I said before, when I walked out after buying my first house, I told myself that's the most expensive pen I'll ever <laughs> own because that's really all I got out of it. All right, trending stories tonight. We're talking about a cuss collar. Yeah. A collar that when your dog barks, it swears. Is that like putting a nickel in the jar I, every time someone cusses in the I house? I guess your dog's going to have to do that now. Also talking about Fluffy the cat. The, uh, he's not fat. He's fluffy. But you and know what? He is a Maine Coon cat they're mix. They're big anyway. And these are valuable and sweet, sweet, beautiful cats. Yeah. And perhaps the biggest trending story today, a Selena Bration. That's right. We're going to have a celebration of all things Selena. We're going to have a tribute concert. It's being planned by Selena's family. It's going to be happening, I believe, in May at the Alamo Dome, and I'm sure it's going to be a sellout. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're following this cool down, Adam. Oh, yeah. Temperatures falling off rather quickly this afternoon, and now as we head into the evening, we're feeling that chill in the air and even the gusty wind. Let's take a look at the current reading outside right now at the airport. We're checking in at 54 degrees. And we'll be down in the 40s as we get later on into the night. And then I think we're just going to coast right there, put temperature on cruise control in the 40s for multiple days. All right, we'll talk about that and even our rainfall potential coming right up. Hello from the other side of a five-year hiatus. Adele fans finally hearing the words that they've been waiting for for so long. Expect my album in September. Okay. <sighs> finally. That is what the British singer-songwriter announced while she was celebrating a friend's wedding over the weekend. Yeah, after officiating the wedding, she took to the stage and put the rumors to rest about a 2020 album, which had been circulating for a few months now. Adele hasn't commented on the post-nuptial announcement but it is certainly music to fans' ears. Mark me down. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Sticking with wedding announcements, though, a fairy tale wedding might be possible after all. Thanks to Disney, it's launching a new line of princess inspired wedding gowns. Allure Bridals is designing 16 dresses reflecting the personality and tastes of characters like Tiana, Ariel, Jasmine, Pocahontas, and of course, Cinderella. It's Ariel, isn't it? Ariel, did I say it wrong? You said Ariel, but. Oh, I just know sorry. this oh, because well, I've got the Disney. You're the expert. Yeah, all three, the, all three the dresses, little girls. <laughs> all of, my daughter actually played the Little Mermaid on stage, so that's how I know. I remember yeah. her doing that. All, that was cute. All of the dresses will be unveiled this April during New York Bridal Fashion Week. After that, they're set to go on sale at Kleinfeld Bridal that's Stores a big deal. in New York. Is that's it? That's a okay. very big deal. I've never heard of that place. Yeah. No word on whether Disney will offer tuxedos for those real world Prince Charmings. You never heard of Say Yes to the Dress? Uh, yeah, I've heard of that show, but I've That's never actually it watched it's it. That it's that show? That's it's that, that place. That okay. Store. Okay. Comedian, I see, I, first time I ever get to tell you something. I love know. it, yeah. Keenan Thompson set to host this year's annual White House Correspondents Dinner in Washington, D.C. Thompson is the longest tenured, tenured Saturday Night Live cast member with 17 years under his belt at SNL. 
He has also set a record for the most celebrity impressions in the show's history. The Emmy Award winner began his career as a child star on Nickelodeon's All That, later snagged his own show, Kenan and Kel. While past presidents have typically attended the dinner, President Trump has skipped it three years in a row. The White House Correspondents Association dinner is April 25th, and something tells me the president may skip it for a fourth year. He uh, is one of the funniest guys on television. He is, he's, he apparently likes it at SNL 17 years, so anyway. Yeah. It's a, it's a good event. It's a fun dinner, but yeah. 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 This year, we'll see. Yeah. We'll Make see. it six degrees drop. Since oh, the five wow. You're See? wow. We're counting. I, we? You know, I yeah. am. I, I was so happy to see that I left a jacket here right? at the station a week or two ago. I found it in the closet and I went, Comes in oh, handy. I'm going to need that going yeah, home uh -huh. tonight. Yeah. Yeah, and tomorrow and next couple of days will definitely be jacket weather for sure. Temperatures are getting put on cruise control here. So let's take a look at our weather headlines and we'll jump into what's happening outside. I think we'll be basically in the 40s from tonight through most of tomorrow, even on into Thursday and a good portion of Friday. So that's why I say temperatures on cruise control. Not much variability and it's going to remain cool. Damp as well, but not a whole lot to show for the dampness. Not a, really a lot of accumulation expected. Just light passing showers. Warmer as we get into the weekend. Look at the stout north breeze. Steady at 20 miles per hour right now in San Antonio at the airport. We're feeling it. It's made a big difference on big impact on temperatures. They've dropped quite a bit. Floresville at 63. That's one, one of the warmer outliers. You get to comfort. It's 49 along with Bandera 58 Port SA 50 in Helotus. Farther to the south, Laredo just got the cold front. Their temperatures will react momentarily to it, but still at 80 degrees in Laredo in the front. Not quite through Victoria and Corpus Christi at this hour. As for rainfall, we had a few light showers with it. Just a trace of rain at the airport. Some better rain as you head up the northern hill country, Edwards Plateau area. That's where we have some good downpours, but that's where most of the real beneficial rain will be in this whole cold front and weather pattern shift that's taking place. A little bit of activity DeWitt County into you know, parts of Carnes County and northern Atascosa County, but not a whole lot to talk about in terms of good real rain. So let's go through time. We'll have more showers developing through the night and even some areas of drizzle tonight and first thing tomorrow morning. So we go for midnight all the way through the morning commute. Overall dampness and between those passing light showers, which will just be off and on throughout the day tomorrow, probably a little bit of drizzle mixed in as well. Notice how the future cast is showing most of the rainfall, the real steady rain and the heavier rain, more appreciable rain just north of the KSAT 12 viewing area. That's where we could actually have uh, some, some decent accumulations around here. A couple days of dampness, but maybe a quarter to a half an inch to show for it. Some locations north of Bear County, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch. So it's 47 in the morning tomorrow. We could briefly hit 50 degrees into the afternoon. Off and on light rain, much colder than what we've been experiencing. A little breezy in the morning, but not as gusty into the afternoon. I do want to really stress that the wind is going to significantly pick up on Thursday. So not only in the 40s all day long on Thursday, cloudy and damp with some drizzle and sprinkles, but also very gusty wind. So the wind will be playing a role on your Thursday by Friday. Hey, we could maybe make it into the lower 50s for a little bit with a few peaks of sunshine, but we're really not expecting a sunny day until Monday. So you'll need some patience. We got a gray stretch ahead of us. That's what we're, you're saying. We'll save on sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. In case you missed, it's coming up next. Good morning, San Antonio. This is Tuesday, February 18th. And the fall voters will be asked to pass a $1.25 billion bond. It promises to bring much needed improvements to more than 40 campuses. China reporting about 1,800 new virus cases and 98 more deaths. But there is some good news. A new report says more than 80% of people infected just had mild illnesses, and the number of new infections seem to be falling since earlier this month. Early voting will last for 10 days until Friday, February 28th. Election Day though, March 3rd. Now, this year's primary ballot includes much more than just the presidential primary. Voters will weigh in on congressional, legislative, judicial, and even state board of education primary. Hey, according to researchers, being kind is a win-win for everyone, boosting health and happiness. 
That's why one group wants you to get inspired and make kindness the norm in your everyday life. February 16th to the 22nd is considered Random Acts of Kindness Week. According to randomactsofkindness.org, research shows feel-good chemicals flood our system when we do something generous that translates into sort of a helper's high. For example, volunteering has been shown to reduce stress, pain, and depression. Giving donations to others has been shown to reduce blood pressure and improve your heart health. I, for somehow, got elected the special assistant to the... Wow, I wouldn't pay attention to you. Okay. Oh, now, wait a minute. I told you what, to blow the balloons up. Look how little up. this balloon is. I told you to blow them up. What is this thing? I, I, I don't know. Ran you think air. I'm going to hit that behind the and back? A lot of people think I got a whole lot of hot air, so you think that balloon would be... Oh, behind the back, oh, even. What's up with pop. that? So much cooler. Basically, basically be in the 40s tonight through most of the day tomorrow, and a little damp as well with... Off and on light rain, some sprinkles, that'll last all the way through Thursday, but notice how temperatures are pretty much on cruise control there. Mostly in the 40s, despite maybe briefly hitting 50 or the lower 50s through Friday. Yeah, most of the time it's going to be rather cool jacket weather the rest of the week. Then we rebound into the weekend by Sunday, near 70 at that point. All right. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for joining us for the News at 6. We'll see you back here on the Night Beat at 10 and, of course, online at 9. Till then, good night. Good night.